Fire up, boy. That's when it doesn't start. Hello, hello. This video is brought to you by the one and only Squarespace. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the perfect place to put a beautiful online presence and run your business. Specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very exciting video. This is a good one. Today, we are at the Classic Car Company. Many of you will know exactly about the Classic Car Company. I've been here many a times before on the channel, and I'm somewhat a regular here. So, this is a place that looks after my 912 and a couple of other of my cars in the past and actually ongoing as well. However, let's just get on with the video. The Range Rover is outside. It's in an absolute state. Uh, it's got a new brown paint job. I was in the Cotswolds the other day and I went off roading. It's quite chaotic. Uh, so, we're in the Classic Car Company here. The 912 is here and the engine has been rebuilt and a number of other things actually whilst they were working on the car needed doing so um, it's been quite extensive and I'm very excited it's just around here they're very busy at the moment very busy an extraordinarily special car there's only a couple of these in the UK uh, let me know if you want to see content with that but we're not here to see that sorry about that guys we are here to see my 912 here she is now before any of you start moaning there's been nothing cosmetic done to the car. Once again, absolutely nothing cosmetic has been done to this car. It has all been um, improving the drivability, improving the reliability, and just basically getting it back to its former solid and enjoyable former glory. So, get this open. And we're also going to find David. He's around here somewhere. Again, if you want a tour of this place and kind of taking some bits out and looking at some other bits uh, and you see anything in the background, um, then do let me know. I'll see what I can do about that. But yeah, classic car company. They are looking after a number of bits. And there's loads of bits hidden as well, which I can't show you, swines. So here she is then. I'm going to get the, uh, the back flap opened. I don't think it's called a back flap, but I think it might be here. Yes. Here we go then. So here we go then. You'll notice this looks nothing like the engine before and I will actually cut to some footage of the engine before now by the magic of the internet. It looks literally brand new. I would waffle through exactly what's been done but by popular demand, ladies and gentlemen, David, you're now a celebrity. <laughs> uh, I'm actually gonna get an autograph after this. Um, David here is actually best placed to run through exactly what's going on with the engine because I will say the wrong word or say the wrong millimetre thing and you'll all go mental at me. So um, you go mental at David instead. So no pressure, mate. I don't bore you with quite such boring detail, but basically... No, no, boring detail's good. We, we like boring detail now. The engine's been out. Um, all of the tinware has been off and been obviously blasted and powder coated. So you've got that lovely finish which although that doesn't obviously make any difference to how the car performs, it certainly makes you feel a bit more confident when you see it looking like that. Yeah, it looks much nicer. And that's how it would have left the factory. So yeah, exactly. I love that. With that little satin finish. Sometimes people do it with gloss and make it look a bit more bling, but that's as it would have been from factory. So all this bit here, has that been done? Yep. Uh, that bit over there? Yep. I'm just saying this bit, that bit. Just pointing at things because I don't actually know what they're called. I'm learning though. I'm, I, I want to learn about this stuff. So. This channel will progress and I will start knowing what I'm talking about soon, but um, yeah, literally everything's been done, but we'll see the difference anyway from the preceding footage. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you there. Carry on. So it all looks a lot prettier. Um, and then in terms of the internals, we obviously did some compression tests and leak back tests and we had a little look through a camera and the internals weren't actually looking too bad, actually really very good for a car of its age. So um, all it needed was, was resealing really. So back seal, see what I did there, resealing really. Yep, yeah, yeah um, that's good. Front seal, front seal, <laughs> um, gearbox seal, drive shaft seal, so everything obviously that keeps all their, all their fluids in. And then if we kind of look sort of down, we've obviously got from a fueling system perspective, we've got old fashioned Solex carbs. So these have just been out and cleaned and cleared through and then timed and just basically set up correctly. So they're balanced. So obviously you've got two and you need to have them both fueling at the same flow rates. Perfect. And you've got nice new fuel lines as well. So I think one of the things we first started talking about actually was the fact that it wasn't holding all its fuel. So Yeah, you like that. You like fuel on the floor over here. It's never ideal. You enjoyed it. Fuel. <laughs> and this fuel pump down here, 
has been rebuilt with brand new diaphragms as well. So from a fueling perspective, we've now got it running really quite nicely. Yeah. From a sparking perspective, um, we've got the timing all correct and we've got a new distributor cap leads uh, and plugs as well. So again, that's more basic service work than, than like engine overhaul stuff, but all really, really important. The rest of the work really was done to um, the uh, <coughs> crank pulley which has been re-sleeved so it can seal properly. We've got the ring gear, which again has been re-sleeved so it can, it can seal properly. Um, and then we mentioned obviously the, the, the gearbox seal and the drive shaft seals as well. So everything's keeping its fluid. And it now Very nice. starts. And Was there clutch stuff as well? Good point. Well, remember, you've obviously just paid the bill. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I just whizzed through the invoice. I just, got, I just went for the number at the bottom and cleared it. You've got a full, full clutch kit on it as well. Awesome. Um, which, is, which is nice and sharp. Um, and as you know, you've got four brand new Porsche, genuine Porsche brake calipers as well. So that'll help the thing stop. Perfect. So the level that we've gone into here, there is there are various levels to this. And I said, look, David, there's no point throwing, you know, tens of thousands at this thing. Because if I wanted concourse, you know, I wouldn't have bought this thing in the first place. But what I want is uh, just an overhaul and just, you know, make it reliable and make it kind of a bit tighter, just make things look like it's not dribbling out all over the place, give everything a, a, a scrub up. So there are, you, you can go more mental than I've gone. That's obviously something you guys offer. Uh, again, you mentioned the carbs earlier. Those might be next on the list. There is a slight uh, flat spot at, at kind of low load, at low speeds, um, which if you're a kind of perfectionist, you would sort that out. Again, that's another chunk of cash, um, which I'll, I'll tackle down the line. You know, this thing's going to be an ongoing process, but for now, you know, that's good for thousands of miles, you know. Yeah, more than that. Yeah. It, it's been road tested and it's, it's absolutely solid. So I'm quite tempted just to, to take this on a mobile up to, the, up to Scotland. And I, I genuinely... I, I'm looking for panic on your face there. Do you think no, it'll be right? It, it would absolutely do it. It would absolutely do it. I mean, you're 100% right. It's not a total engine rebuild. You know, it's still got its original crank in and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, there's no point in just chucking it out and, you know, spending tens of thousands of pounds if it's not actually needed. No. I genuinely think if you drove that sympathetically and let it cool down every couple of hours... Yes. Any reason why that wouldn't get the Scotland at all. Perfect. I've just made a rod for my own back now if it breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, that's that. You've just signed a contract there. It will go to Scotland with no issues. No, I am actually really sympathetic with all my cars. I do have a little bit of mechanical sympathy. I let everything warm up. Um, I don't beans them anyway, you know, um, and I let things cool down and whatnot as well. So um, I'm not a complete ape. I do look after things. So hopefully it should be absolutely fine. And don't forget, I'm not going to be dailying this anyway. You know, this is going to be a little toy for the weekends and whatnot. Um, so with fingers crossed, you should be all right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cars like this, engines like this, they actually, they're better when you drive them a bit more enthusiastically. Yeah. Give them a really good Italian tune up and, and <laughs> they just, they're eager for it. So it's, um, especially like you mentioned with the wee flat spots and the carbs, when at low load and just pottering around town, it's not where it's at its best. When you're driving it through the gears and country roads, that's, that's when it's really, really lovely. Very good. And it will be going to the countryside. I don't, I'm still trying to decide whether or not to move this one or my target to the countryside with the Credit GT. Actually, no, I've just organised my own unit out there. So who knows? I don't know. We, it might be staying with you. It might not be. I don't actually know at this point. Do you know what? This is actually more likely to stay in London than anything because it's ULES exempt. I was about to say, now that we've just stopped it from dropping oil all over the floor. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to leave this here. This is going to be, I think this is going to be a London car. Having said all the countryside bits, I think it's going to be a London car. So if you hate it, sorry, you might be lumped with it for, for the foreseeable. So next steps then. Uh, next steps are going to be interior. Now, ordinarily, I would say to David, um, right, interior, please, mate, because they've got a trimming shop here. Do you not? Behind that wall over there, we've got, we've got uh, Roger in there, who's, you know, decades of experience. Unbelievable trimmer. However, uh, you guys are booked up. He's got that to do first, he's got that to do second, and then another one that's not even finished in the, uh, in the mechanical shop yet, so. So, um, yes. So, it, it's not going to get done anytime soon, uh, and with that reason in mind, I am going to give the car to D-Class Auto. Many of you will know D-Class, and there'll be full video with the guys there doing the interior. I've taken all your feedback on board about the interior. I've read through all the comments, and I've ignored them all, and I'm gonna do what I want anyway, so that'll be coming. Actually, should we start the engine?
That might, yeah. that might be a thing, mightn't it? And it does sound quite good, despite the fact it's only uh, the 1.6 uh, four-cylinder from the, the Beetle and the 356 and the VW camper vans. It does sound pretty decent because it's got this Dansk sports exhaust on it as well. So I might get a little bit out of the way. Fire up, boy. That's when it doesn't start. Lovely stuff. As I said before then, there is a Dansk sports exhaust on there, so this is slightly more rowdy than it should be. Makes quite a racket for a little old thing. It's a good noise actually. 1.6s don't sound like that these days. They certainly don't. Lovely stuff. Another little thing, just before I go, this car was wonky, and some of you actually pointed out on Instagram and uh, YouTube before, but the whole car was completely wonky. They've actually adjusted the, what's it called? The, some torsion sort of, bar. Torsion bar. The torsion bar has been adjusted and it's actually completely to the millimeter level now, which I guess is a good thing, but it was, it, it had a bit of a limp before. The front end of that is just so cool. You cannot beat these. These are just the coolest things ever. Another little thing that I want to field as well. I'm not going to be getting a private plate. This plate is part of the car's history, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, I like it and that's that. I think that's it. Is it uh, comprehensive? Yeah. All bases covered? All bases covered. Wicked. Just wanted to show you the brakes very quickly before I go. So, we've got brand new calipers in there. Now, you can get Chinese repro calipers. You can mess around with cheaper bits and bobs, um, but the difference really is quite marginal between genuine Porsche parts and you know Chinese repro parts. And I think it's, um, it's a false economy trying to save money on these things. So it's got genuine Porsche calipers all the way around. And these are actually, contrary to even what I thought originally, it's actually got disc brakes on it. Um, and they really didn't work that well before, so I'm quite excited to get trying all these out. The car is actually going first thing in the morning, tomorrow morning. It's just come back from all this engine work and the brake work. Was, uh, the brake work was something that they didn't even schedule for, but they managed to get it all done in the original time frame, which is amazing. Um, but it's actually going up for trim work in the morning because I've got a deadline to stick to on that. So as much as I'd love to take this out for a hoon and show you, it's not going to be time yet for that. The car's going to get the trim work and it's going to come back to David here and he's actually going to work some magic with this paint. There is something you can do with this paint to bring it up to um, slightly better than it is already because at the moment it looks... Well, I don't even have uh, the, the requisite adjectives for the state of the car at the moment. So he's going to do some stuff with the paintwork. So there'll be a grand unveiling and a first drive coming. But for now, there's just a little update with my little 912 showing you what is going on. These things are never simple. They never take uh, a short amount of time to sort out. So appreciate all your patience with it. And hopefully you're enjoying this series. We interrupt this 912 related broadcast with a very cool offer from Squarespace. Now, if you don't know about Squarespace, and I'm sure you do by now, it is the ultimate place for building your own website, be it for a passion project or a business, there really is no better place. And there's an exclusive deal coming right up for you guys if you're keen on doing exactly that. There's some really cool features that make your path to online success super simple and efficient. The first of which is you can actually build members communities and community areas on your website with ease using the inbuilt tools on Squarespace. And actually you can use Squarespace as an all-in-one tool. You can go on there right now and go and see if your domain name is even available. Purchase the domain and get going off the bat. You don't need to mess around with loads of different websites. It's all in one. Another really useful thing, something that I actually use myself, is with Crepchief Notify you can build monthly subscription models on Squarespace as well so you can build that into your website and generate recurring income which is key key goods. The other thing as well that e-commerce stores use regularly and really really effectively are email campaigns and you can build those in very easily with Squarespace as well. It gives you the tools to run effective and efficient email campaigns absolutely key as well. Another thing is that obviously most traffic these days is directed from mobile phones as well and it can be a pain optimizing your website for mobile traffic. Again, Squarespace makes that super, super easy, meaning your website is both amazing on a desktop and on a mobile phone. Now the banger is the fact that you can get a free trial and when you're ready to start, save 10% on your first order with Squarespace using the exclusive link below. that will also be in the pinned comment and the description. So go and get involved in that. Start your online dream and also support the channel as well. So get in the mix and as always, keep me posted with what you're building. For now then, thank you so much for watching. Thank you David once again. This is fast becoming the star of my channel. If you missed the video with just David, um, 
take it in. No, he, he took the helm. He was he ran with it. He was in he was in full YouTube mode. He made a made a great job of it. He says men can't multitask, driving and talking to a camera. It's not as easy as it looks. You know what? It's really not easy, particularly if you haven't done it before. It's really not easy at all, and you nailed that. So um, at some point, you want to just take over the channel full time. I would say, and I'll take over this place, but everything will be on fire within about five minutes. So, no, the roofs will be caved in and everyone will have all their cars uh, smashed to pieces, so that won't work. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much for following this series. I really, really, really appreciate all the enthusiasm, and I do read all the comments on the 912 stuff. I know it's not for everyone. I know some of you just want to see Lambos, uh, but for those of you that enjoy this content, I'm going to keep going with it. Thank you so much, and stay tuned. Cheers, guys. Bye.